Welcome to the No Sugar Coating Podcast. I am Amber Romaniak, emotional eating, digestive, and hormone expert. I am also the founder of amberapproved.ca. I support professional women achieve optimal health through mindful eating, self-care, and overcoming self-sabotage with food. This podcast provides the honest truth on what you really need to create body freedom. The No Sugar Coating Podcast provides information on healthy living, lifestyle changes, nutrition, and diet, and is intended for informational purposes only. Always seek the advice of your healthcare practitioner regarding your health and nutrition program. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 181 of the No Sugar Coating Podcast. I hope you're having a wonderful day and a great week. This week, I am exploring a really interesting topic, and I found now that I've been coaching, you know, my clients for almost six years and, you know, even observing my own journey when I was struggling with emotional eating, there's something that is below the emotional eating triggers. So today I'm going to be exploring what's below your emotional eating triggers Because many people think they should just have more willpower, they should just be able to say no to food, you should just be able to have just one, and or you you know your triggers and you should just be able to not, you know, go to food. I just really want to come to tell you that there's nothing wrong with you, it's not about willpower, it's not that you need to try harder, you should just be able to, you know, only have one or just stay away from food, that there are many layers below your triggers that make it feel really difficult to not go to food and to stop the vicious cycle and to break the old patterns. So I wanted to share more insight with you on that today because I think it will help you to see why potentially reaching out for support to gain freedom could be so valuable for you and so freeing and empowering for you. And also to give you more insight that this is a complex journey. This isn't about diets or quick fixes or changing one thing or that it's all going to be gone in a week or a month. I had a conversation with a client earlier today and she said, I've had these patterns and habits for decades, right? So she's like, I now I'm in the understanding of that it's, it's gonna, it took, you know, more than a week or a month or uh, a few months to really gain um, momentum to overcome the sabotage of food. And, and, you know, so it, it does take time. There are layers here and the more awareness you have, the more hopefully the goal is that you can stop being so hard on yourself and start to be more kind and understanding of your body and your journey. And that again, there may be a wonderful opportunity to utilize Um, you know, working with somebody who really understands all these layers and pieces and has the brain of, you know, a food addict of somebody who did really struggle deeply with emotional eating and binge eating. So today that's what I'm going to be exploring with you. The show notes for today's episode can be found at amberapproved.ca forward slash podcast forward slash 181. A friendly reminder to subscribe to the No Sugar Coating Podcast on all podcast apps. You can click the link in the show notes as well. You can listen to all episodes at amberapproved.ca forward slash podcast. So as per um, my touching on this earlier, is it time to love the body that you live in? Is it time to build a healthy, freeing relationship with food? Well, let's have you actually spring into a body that you truly love and build a healthy relationship with food that you truly love so that you can be present and enjoy your life to the fullest. I know summer's coming, so are you feeling the summer body crunch? I used to feel this all the time as well. Spring was often a time where I was trying to lose weight from my last round of binge eating that brought on weight gain and the loss of control. Of course, I wanted to wear my smaller summer clothes that were lower sizes. And the problem was I couldn't ever get motivated for long enough to keep the pressures to lose the weight and to keep it off. And I'd maintain it for a little while and gain it all back and lose control with food again. It was very overwhelming and I would scold myself and you know, then I wouldn't be able to wear half my closet. And then I'd essentially not allow myself to enjoy my summer. And I'd limit my activities because I had not lost the weight and I didn't wanna feel embarrassed. So can you relate? Do you fear you're going to be judged by others? Do you fear you're going to, you know, judge yourself and and be hard on yourself and compare yourself to others? Do you feel like you're not going to be able to wear your clothes? Once I decided that I was tired of pressuring, limiting, and restricting myself from living my life to the fullest because of my weight, I made some changes. And I took action steps toward learning how to take better care of myself without extreme diets or extreme exercise. 
and really learning that overcoming emotional eating was a very important thing for me to be able to do so that I could stop battling with my weight and really fill the void and learn how to love myself. So if you are wanting to take the pressure off, if you're wanting to build a healthy relationship with food and with yourself, and you're ready to make a commitment to your true health and well-being, then I encourage you to email me at info at amberapproved.ca with the subject line spring coaching sale. So I'm having a short yet very valuable um, sale for anyone who's interested in taking action on, you know, exploring coaching with me. I'm offering a wonderful savings on my six month and one year coaching programs. So I really encourage you to reach out if this is resonating with you uh, to be able to say I get excited for summer in all seasons and I love the body I live in. It's just so fulfilling. It's priceless. You deserve to be able to say these words. And you deserve to gain body and food freedom. So again, you can email me at info at amberproof.ca with the subject line, spring coaching sale. And if you're wondering if you're struggling with emotional eating, you can also take the emotional eating quiz and watch the emotional eating video series. They're both available at amberapproved.ca and the links for both are in the show notes. And last but not least, be sure that you are following me on Instagram at amberromaniac, which is my name, as this is where I share a lot of health tips, emotional eating inspiration recipes, Instagram stories, lives, and more. So if you are interested to support the podcast, you can do so by leaving a review. You can do so on your phone or computer by going to podcasts and searching for the No Sugar Coating Podcast. Even if you're subscribed to me, you'll need to find the show in this way. Once you're on my main page, you can click on reviews and write a review in purple. Give me five stars if you like, write a little something, or you can go to amberproof.ca forward slash review, and it will take you to the page where you can follow the steps that I've just shared. If you have questions, you can submit them to nosugarcoatingpodcast at gmail.com. I just please ask that questions are no more than 150 words in length as health histories do require more support and one-on-one coaching will probably be a better fit and if you're finding you're struggling with emotional eating a specific eating style isn't working for you you have digestive issues inflammation you suspect your hormones are out of balance you struggle to make yourself a priority your self-care continues to be at the bottom of your list and you're fighting with your weight in your body while you're in the right place because these are all of the topics that I will continue to talk about diving into the habits and mindsets to set you on a different path. Amber Approved offers private coaching for hormonal imbalances, weight loss and digestive issues, emotional eating and more. Contact Amber at amberapproved.ca to book your 30 minute complimentary consultation today. So exploring what's below your emotional eating triggers. So I really believe that any any want to eat aside for physical nourishment is emotional eating. So it's like if you've just eaten and now you're finding yourself dipping into a chip bag or a a bowl of ice cream and you're not actually hungry. If you're bored and you're eating, if you're alone and that triggers you to emotionally eat, if you're eating and driving, a lot of people will go to the store and buy a bunch of food and then eat it on the way home. You know, stress, stressful relationships, lack of sleep, poor um, sleep, low energy, fatigue, hormone imbalances, digestive imbalances. There's lots of physical symptoms that can fuel emotional eating. And of course, a lot of emotional overwhelm and symptoms and stress and people and things that can fuel emotional eating. So oftentimes, one of the th- first things that I do with my clients is I really help them to have a deeper level of understanding of what their emotional eating triggers are. And as we navigate them overcoming emotional eating, and I provide a high level of support to them um, through my Body Freedom Program, they start to gain a handle and build awareness on what's triggering them to go to food. And then they're able to start catching and shifting and making more empowering decisions to work through their triggers and to not go to food and to go to, you know, different means of breaking the pattern with different forms of actions that don't include food. And something that is so interesting is as they build a deeper understanding of what's triggering them to go to food, then they obviously are emotionally eating or binging less and less and less. And then there is that odd time where something triggers them to go to food. And oftentimes, you know, they'll get frustrated. I thought I was done with this. Why did this happen? You know, maybe I'm just will never figure it out. Is there something wrong with me because I haven't figured it out yet? And let me tell you that there's nothing wrong with you. You're not broken. It's not that you don't have the willpower. I always share failure is not negative. Failure is empowering. It is positive. We learn so much from failure. And every time someone does go back to emotional eating again, 
they always learn a lot from it. And I did as well. I mean, if I wouldn't have failed miserably over and over and over again to overcome emotional eating, I would have never been able to identify all of my triggers and see how many there were. There's dozens. And then that I wouldn't have been able to, you know, help my clients as in depth as I do. So it really helped to teach me that, you know, it was priceless and so valuable because now I'm able to support my clients on a deeper level with a deeper level of understanding because of what I went through. So perhaps you were, you know, tired. And then even though you prepped your food that day and and you're like, okay, well, I'm tired. You're like, I'm going to have a good day though. I'm not going to go to food. I'm going to, you know, just navigate my day and, and make sure I go to bed early tonight. And then your day doesn't end up going as planned. There's chocolate in the lunchroom or you get invited to go for lunch with a friend and end up, you know, ordering a bunch of stuff off the menu that doesn't make you feel good. And then you end up, you know, deciding you need to go to the grocery store on the way home and you buy a box of cookies or ice cream or chips. And by the time you actually get home, you've eaten it all. And then you feel like absolute garbage. You're angry. You're frustrated. Why did I do that? Ah, I thought this was over. Um, and there's this frustration and overwhelm. And then again, you're physically, you're bloated, you feel yucky, you're really tired and brain fog now, you're in pain, you just want to kind of crawl into a hole and, and get really upset. And or you think that all of your progress that perhaps you've been gaining is lost when this is not the case at all. This is that you've had an experience, you've emotionally ate it's temporary. And so there's one of two things you can do here. You can get really hard on yourself and really angry and get into the what's the point mentality and think you've messed everything up and that you're starting back at square one, which again, isn't the case unless you really believe it is. I don't believe that you're back at square one. So you can go down that road of complete negative self-sabotage and which will probably fuel more binging and more loss of control. And over time, of course, that will fuel more weight gain and more upset, etc. Or you can choose to take a different road, which is it happened. I can't change the past. I can, however, get curious. I can explore this. I can take this information forward with me and I can see how things go as I move forward. Also, I can forgive myself um, because being hard on yourself is a trigger. You know, getting angry at yourself, being a drill sergeant and scolding yourself and putting yourself down, calling yourself names, affirming you're not good enough, and or then punishing yourself furtherly with starvation, restriction, extreme exercise, or more binging. That's all punishment. That's all self-sabotage. That's all self-hate. So what is so interesting about this is oftentimes when my clients say, well, I think that the trigger was that I was tired or I didn't even feel triggered. So I'm not sure what, why I ate, why I did that because I had no intention to do that. And this is where what I often find is below the emotional eating triggers is a series of sub triggers. So perhaps it's that the overall theme or the main trigger felt as though you were tired And that's why you felt like you had a bit more of an I don't care mentality um, and it made it easier to go to food. But it's to actually understand that there is multiple sub triggers below this feeling of being tired. So essentially what I find for most people is they may have a main trigger that triggers the emotional eating, but there actually may be multiple triggers that are happening. So I like to say that most people can identify a main trigger, but that there's usually triggers below that. So sub triggers that can actually really further fuel sabotage with food that you're not even aware of. And that is not your fault. And that is why I cannot encourage all of you wonderful people enough to not be so hard on yourself. This is a complex journey. I can't stress that enough. And I don't say that to disempower you. you. I say that to empower you to potentially get support or to not be so hard on yourself right? Like this is a journey that takes time to understand and overcome. And it takes growing a deep level of awareness with yourself, with your body, with your triggers, with your environment, your mindset, your thoughts, right? Like this is not just a one, one size fits all. There are many things here. And that's why most diets and plans, meal plans, food plans, exercise plans, and, and, um, little programs that you can get online or books, Don't resolve your issues because for most people, this is going on for years or decades and it takes time to break down the complexity of the mindset, the patterns, the behaviors, the brain chemistry, the physical imbalances, the emotional imbalances, the lack of self-worth, the lack of self-love, etc. 
So let's say, just again, using the example that tired was the, the trigger that you've been able to identify that has been, you know, that has triggered you today to go to food. Now, as we dig a bit deeper, we come to understand that there were multiple sub-triggers, okay? So being tired already made you feel more vulnerable with food. What does that mean? Well, often if we're tired, maybe we're not as mindful. Maybe we aren't feeling as excited to eat the food that we've taken with us. Maybe when we're tired, we forget to actually grab our lunch and then you don't have nourishing food available. And that is a trigger, right? Because oftentimes if people don't have you know, good food as they're navigating through emotional eating. It just feels easier to go and make um, other choices and that can make you more vulnerable to make poor food choices, which then can trigger full-blown emotional eating or binge eating. So perhaps it's that you're tired and that you also forgot your lunch and that just made it easier for you to go, well, I guess I forgot my lunch. I don't have anything and I'm tired. So I'm just going to go pick whatever I want. So perhaps that was the second like sub-trigger scenario. Perhaps you got to work and you had your lunch, but you're tired and all of a sudden there's a big bowl of candy or chocolate. Or maybe it's somebody's birthday and so there is a cake being served. So there's like this unexpected like food that you feel vulnerable to in your office or a place you went that day. And you're just like, oh man, now you have a visual trigger. You see it and it's one of your favorites and you haven't had success of having control or mindfulness with it. So you feel really vulnerable and now you're nervous and you're going, nope, not gonna have any, not gonna have any, can't have any. And that restrictive mindset of no, not gonna have any, can't have any, that can also be a trigger as is the visual trigger of seeing that bowl in front of you. So now all of a sudden we have like three or four sub triggers below the already like general big trigger of being tired. So as you can start to see, this is complex. This is not just about, oh, well, I have no willpower. There are multiple things at play here. And I'm going to talk about the ego as well, because this is a huge part of the self-sabotage and, and, the, and what can fuel you to go to food. But I'll talk about toward the end of the podcast. So now we have all these multiple triggers happening. We have this tired trigger, and then we have all these sub-triggers. You see the food, you forgot your lunch that's your favorite food or it's maybe it's a serious trigger food for you perhaps then you throw on top of that that you have a negative interaction with a coworker, a family member your spouse your child and that's just making you feel extremely overwhelmed so now all you want to do is drown yourself and numb yourself in a pint of ice cream or the chocolate cake at work or perhaps you know you something happened at lunch and you weren't able to eat your lunch and now you're getting ready to leave work and you're like, you know what? I actually need to grab a couple things on the way home for supper. And you have no intent to get anything that's going to trigger you. Um, but now you're hungry at the grocery store and you're tired, which again, sub triggers, they make you feel more vulnerable to food. All of a sudden you find yourself in the candy slash baked good aisle and you are like, oh, I'm just gonna, you know, get a box of cookies or I'm going to get a chocolate bar or I'm going to, you know, get some ice cream. The kids want some, or again, you justify, I'll get it for someone else, or I'll just have a little bit. I've had a bad day or I've been tired. I deserve it. Right? So there's another trigger is being in a space where there's food around. You're hungry, you're tired. You've had maybe an emotional day. And now you're looking at all these potential temptations, right? Seeing the food, that's a visual trigger. So you get the ice cream or the cookies or the chocolate and you have it beside you on the drive home. And because you're focused on driving, hopefully, you're unconsciously now reaching for that bag of chips or that candy or chocolate or whatever you got and you have a bite of it and you go, I'm just going to have one. And then it's like you have that first bite and you get that pleasure or that high of how good it tastes and how delicious it is and how temporarily amazing it makes you feel. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'll just have one more. And that one tastes pretty good too and feels pretty good. And then you get through half the bag or half of whatever you've eaten. And now all of a sudden it's, you've realized that you've not had a mindful experience. Now you're in self-sabotage and it's not feeling so good. And then you get flustered and angry and then you eat the rest of whatever it is, or you finish off whatever it is. And now you're bloated, you're frustrated, you're feeling guilt and shame, and you're starting to get into negative self-talk. And I messed up again. Oh, I thought I was through this. Why did this happen? I don't really understand. I really don't have any willpower. Maybe I'm just going to struggle with this for the rest of my life. And you go into that negative self-talk. And then again, could further fuel 
self-sabotage with food once you get home and or again that constant cycle of beating yourself up getting into a negative self-talk mode it really has an impact on your relationship with yourself and and the relationship with food that you're trying to mend um, the relationship with food that you're trying to gain freedom from it and build that healthy relationship with so essentially just to kind of summarize that you had the overall main trigger of being tired but you weren't necessarily sure you know usually you can navigate being tired and it doesn't make you go to food perhaps um, perhaps for some of you being tired is your worst nightmare because you always go to food but just know that there may have been multiple sub triggers that happened through your day that fueled you to go to food okay so there's often not just one trigger there may just be sometimes but oftentimes as I talk to my clients we identify multiple triggers that potentially could happen through the day that are completely unexpected or that you didn't even realize were happening until we come back and revisit the experience and talk about it and have a better understanding and awareness of what actually happened. Another big sub-trigger that I find is after people emotionally eat, they stay really hard on themselves, beat yourself up. That will trigger more sabotage with food because you're feeling really negative and yucky and that doesn't feel good emotionally. And so what do you want to do? You want to numb or check out from not feeling happy so oftentimes then people will go to their old go-to which is food so it's very interesting cycle that can continue to happen so there's those potential sub triggers that may happen and then there's other physical symptoms that may be sub triggers like hormone imbalances that fuel different kinds of cravings and blood sugar fluctuations and appetite level changes like i mentioned not being prepared with food eating while you're distracted so mindless eating and maybe an unexpected experience you have that day that's a big trigger or sub trigger it may be that innocent stop at the grocery store on the way home it may be again that you innocently forgot your lunch that day and now all of a sudden because you don't have your lunch you think well now I can't eat well and you go into all or nothing mindset and then you make really poor choices when you actually could have made you know a more mindful decision the guilt is a trigger the shame is a trigger the deciding you're going to restrict and you know binge is a trigger there's just many things that can really fuel sabotage with food past what you may be aware of as far as what your triggers are. Another big trigger is self-worth. So normally I find what is at the foundation of self-sabotage with food that, and I've talked about this before, but it is a lack of self-worth. It is a lack of self-love. So when you don't feel good enough, then it's feeling behaviors like people-pleasing, overachieving, perfectionism, all-or-nothing mindsets, self-judgment, judgment of others, criticism of yourself, assuming and thinking you need to go with the status quo and be, you know, dieting and restricting and over-exercising. You're jumping on all the new bandwagons with eating styles. So we've got like all the high fat, low carb, the keto. For some people, it's paleo. For some people, it's vegan. And and for those people who that's working for and you you don't have an unhealthy relationship with food, great. But for the majority of the people I talk to, you know, food rules and restrictions and cutting out whole food groups is actually another trigger. And it's actually fueling food fears. It's fueling binge eating and eating disorders. And it's not building a healthy relationship with food. So self-worth is really at the core of, of your thoughts, your beliefs, and your, your emotions. And then you're taking actions from your thoughts, beliefs, and emotions that are fueling self-sabotage and building deeper or stronger patterns of emotional eating, binge eating, food addiction, whatever you want to call it. These patterns, the more you repeat the pattern of emotional eating or binging, restricting, the deeper the pattern gets or the stronger the pattern gets. So that's why it may feel very difficult or very overwhelming to think of gaining freedom from that or overcoming that. And that's because there's some deep-rooted patterns here. There's probably some deep-rooted belief systems and emotions. Obviously, if you don't feel good enough, that in itself may make you not feel worthy, that you're worthy to have a healthy relationship with food in your body. You may not feel worthy to overcome such a you know deep-seated struggle. You may fear loving yourself. You may fear having success in all areas of your life or having a loving relationship with yourself and someone else. You may fear, you know, many different things here. So it's very interesting what kind of beliefs and mindsets can keep people wanting to stay stuck or comfortable in binging or sabotaging with food because it's what they know. And what they don't know is what 
is ahead of them on a different path. So what is possible if you decided that you wanted to build a healthy relationship with food and you wanted to learn how to overcome emotional eating and, and learn how to love yourself and build body awareness. The cost though of staying in those old patterns is your health, physically and emotionally, your relationships with yourself and other people, your success, your abundance, your ability to enjoy life. It really is, it costs you your full enjoyment of your life because I personally don't know anybody that is fully enjoying their life, binging and sabotaging and hating on themselves. And I just want to be blunt um, because I care and because I love all of you and because I want you guys to have a bit of a wake up call. And you can't force change. You can just force yourself to be ready to embark on a different journey. But it's like, what is it going to take for you to want to make your health a priority? What is it going to take for you to want to, you know, make yourself number one? What is it going to take for you to really want to build a healthy relationship with food and your health and your body for that matter? Because to me, the costs far outweigh the uncertainty of gaining freedom, the unfamiliarity and, and the discomfort of embarking on a different journey. Trust me, you have your days where it's definitely doesn't feel comfortable, but I'm seeing people make massive changes. I've witnessed my clients set healthy boundaries with their parents whom they never felt they could. I've seen people leave unhealthy relationships and unhealthy friendships, close businesses down because the business was slowly killing them, right? They have taken steps life-changing steps that, good gracious, those would be scary things to do, way out of your comfort zone. But their health is at stake. Their happiness is at stake. And honestly, their quality of lives is at stake. And so they're mustering up the courage, which you all have inside of you to make these changes. And I commend the people who are willing to do what it takes to build this healthy relationship with themselves and with food. And I'm not saying that you have to go and end a bunch of relationships and, and shut a business down, but I'm saying for, you know, specific individuals that I'm working with, they, I didn't tell them to do these things. They made the decision on their own that if I really want to do this, I need to make some big changes. And they stepped way out of their comfort zones to do so. And I commend them because it does take courage. And you all, again, as I've said, have it within you. So sometimes it's just small things that need to change, like not watching TV and eating. That can seem like a big, scary change, right? And to other people, that can seem like, oh, well, that's easy. So regardless of what the changes are for you, don't judge them. They're just as valuable. But it's to know that making these changes are all in support of your greatest good and you building that healthy relationship with food. So changing patterns, setting healthy boundaries, saying no, asking for help, right? Making change, and I know change is very scary sometimes, I've definitely had my fair share of resistance to change, especially if things are really good. It's like, well, why, why do I, why would I want this to change? Everything's really good, but change is inevitable. It's part of life. And when we can learn how to accept change and flow with it, it again, makes um, changes like this much easier. So what is another thing that's at the core of all this? This is the last thing I want to talk about today is the ego, negative self-talk, negative patterns, low self-worth oh, you can't do this, it'd be too uncomfortable, be too overwhelming, you'll never be happy, you'll always struggle with food, oh, well then, you know, if you decide to have a healthy relationship with food, you'll never be able to eat certain things, none of that is true, that's all your ego, and the ego is a self-sabotaging mindset, and we all have an ego, and yes, 10 years later, after overcoming food addiction and, and balancing my health and being in business for six years, I still have an ego. We all have an ego. And unless you become enlightened, which I mean, I'm open to miracles, but unless you become enlightened, you will always have an ego and the ego is there to teach us and to grow us. And we can always lovingly challenge the ego, but just know any negative self-talk, any negative thoughts and emotions, self-sabotage with food, fear, restriction, um, wanting to stay in your comfortable sabotaging patterns. That is all your ego. And one of the most valuable things that I work with people on is learning to understand that you have an ego and that the ego is not the real you. The real you is the you that's listening to this podcast that really so deeply wants to make the changes, but she's scared. And that's totally understandable. The real you is the you that wants to feel healthy, wants to have you know good energy, wants to love your body, wants to have success, 
wants to be present and enjoy your family and your health and happiness and, you know, start that business or gain success in your career or pass on really positive, healthy habits and mindsets to your kids. That's the you. That's the real you. The ego is the rest. It's all the negative stuff that isn't you. So essentially for about four years uh, or three and a half years, my ego was in full control. The binging, the negative self-talk, the sabotage, the drill sergeant forcing me to go to the gym and work out really hard, the fear of losing control with my body and food, and then it would happen over and over again. That was my ego. But that is a huge part of what truly was triggering me. It was all the negative self-talk, the void, the lack of self-love. And I had no freaking clue what the ego was until I was actually over my food addiction. I knew that I had a self-sabotaging mindset that created that, but I didn't also know that that was my ego. So it was about six, just under six years ago that I really started to understand what the ego was and all the fear, negative self-talk and resistance to change and resistance and, and starting to really understand when my ego is in power that's not the real me. And I have many different things that I can do now to gain my power back. You know, I don't struggle with emotionally eating anymore and I haven't for a very long time, but there's other things that pop up. There's other patterns and there's always a deeper means of growth um, to work on as you overcome certain things on your unique journey, whether it's still health related things or it's emotional related or it's self-worth, etc. But it's to know that the ego, which fuels the negative self-talk is not the real you and is not the you that's going to encourage um, yourself to book a complimentary call or to take advantage of the coaching sale or to reach out and ask for help. Your ego is going to disempower you and go, you don't need help. You're weak or you've got to do this on your own or, oh, it's too scary. So you should just stay in your old habits. The ego wants you to suffer. The ego wants you to stay stuck. But the true you knows that there's something different, wants something different, knows that you know, continuing to do what you're doing is not going to get you anywhere and that you do want to take a different approach and you are wanting to overcome this self-sabotage with food. Food freedom is possible for everybody who wants it. It does require taking a different approach. Body freedom is possible for anyone who wants it. It, Again, it does require taking a different approach and it also requires a thorough approach. Understanding your hormone health, your digestive health, your inflammation, your mindset, your patterns, your self-care. If you are at the bottom of your priority list and you're give, give, giving to everyone else, well, I guarantee you there's probably not a very high likelihood that you're going to overcome emotional eating because all that stress is fueling self-sabotage with food versus when we start to shift your mindset, your health, your awareness, you start to make yourself a priority. You start to feel better. You're eating, you know, emotionally eating less. You're feeling safer in your body. The weight starts to come off. You get clarity. You're going, this is amazing. And I swear to you, I have never worked with anyone who has regretted reaching out to me and regretted going on the journey. And they all say, I wish I would have done so sooner. I wish I would have reached out sooner. I wish I would have started this journey sooner. That's the feedback I get. And I say, well, you know what? It happens in divine timing and it happens exactly as it's meant to. So don't regret that. But what I would encourage you to not regret is not doing anything about it and getting to the end of your life and completely regretting fighting with your body, your weight, and with food for your entire life and missing out on so many precious memories, moments, and experiences that you chose to limit yourself with. That's what I don't want you to regret. So I hope that this podcast today has helped to give you some insight. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Um, The show notes for today's episode can be found at amberapproved.ca forward slash podcast forward slash 181. Remember, there's no better time than the present to take action on your health. So take action now. If you're resonating, I look forward to connecting with you through a body freedom call. You can email me to further connect. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. Listen to this more than once. The more you listen, take notes, sit with it. You will hear something different. You will take away something different. So I really do appreciate everyone that listens all over the world. I think it's like over 66 countries now that people are listening. So I'm so grateful and thankful for all of you. Love and gratitude to all of you. I hope you have a beautiful day, a great week. And I will look forward to sharing a whole new podcast with you next Sunday. Thanks so much for listening to the podcast. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe, review, and rate this podcast and share it with your friends. You can find me at amberapproved.ca and follow me on Instagram and YouTube at Amber Romaniak. Join me next Sunday for another brand new episode and another step toward body freedom.